Well, good evening and Happy New Year to everyone that's on the call. And Happy New Year to all of those, hopefully, that are on their way. This is Warren Davis. It is uh, the 6th of January. This is our first call for the year. And just want to say welcome to everyone. And so glad you're here. There's quite a few folks on the call tonight. And so uh, we've got a lot of uh, questions, I'm sure, to get answered. And even before we get some questions answered, we do have some information to give you. So I've got a lot to tell you tonight of new things that have uh, taken place in the Investment Dominator. And it uh, looks like we have several new people on with us. And I'm just so happy to be here. Hope uh, all of you had a very safe new year. I had the pleasure of speaking with quite a few of you over the past uh, couple of weeks. And I know that some, some folks have had some uh, challenges over this particular holiday. And so definitely our thoughts and prayers go out with them that are having, you know, the struggles of the weekend or, or this particular holiday season. Sometimes the holiday seasons are not the most pleasant times for people. So we have to remember to be patient and to show a lot of love and concern. It, it uh, goes a long way. But in any case, we are here today to get your questions answered. Those of you that are brand new with us, that uh, you might have just started uh, last uh, within our last couple of weeks, we want to remind you to send in your questions. You just simply uh, can use the control box, type in your questions, and hit send, and they will get to me. So, hey, happy new year, Amy. It's uh, shaping up to be a good one, although we're only <laughs> six days into the new year. But, uh, you know, I had some challenges myself over the holidays, but I am convinced that as long as I'm this side of the grave, I've got a chance to make everything the way it should be. And so I understand that, uh, you know, old wise saying from an old preacher I used to listen to said, heat and pressure make a diamond. Heat and pressure make a diamond. So I tell you what, I'm starting to sparkle already. So just get ready. This is going to be a great new year for hopefully for all of you that are here. Uh, as I forestated, there's a lot of you on the call, so we're going to do our best to, um, as we go through the different aspects uh, that I'm going to inform you about, if you have any questions, please type them in at that time. I'm going to start to display my investment dominator screen here. So that, oh, you know, I, I got so excited about this being a new year. I'm hoping everybody can see my screen and can hear me okay. I, I, my indicators are showing that you can, but uh, it, it always helps me if I get at least one person out there with so many of you out there, at least one person to say, yes, we can hear you and we see your screen. Everybody see my investment dominator screen, at least one or two of you out there? Can you give me a little, well, you can't give me a shout out, can you? Because uh, you're on mute, but at least you can, <laughs> you can type in your response. All right. All right, great. Thank you, Anita. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate that so much. Um, it's always good to have some some feedback. And when I first started doing these calls, I would get a little, you know, I don't know. It was an, an uneasy feeling because I felt like I was the only one talking, um, you know, and it's weird to have a one-way conversation. But uh, I know you're there, and I appreciate it. I'm going to tell you about some new changes that have happened here in the last, well, I guess it's been a couple of months, actually, that just did get released into the Investment Dominator. If you're looking at my menu up here, one of the first things you'll notice is there may be a few uh, words missing, like the first one, you know, land deals. You know, we don't, we now have just the word land and then houses and buyers, you know, used to be buyers. Now it's marketing and Lo and behold, look at here, we have notes. Uh, this actually just came out Friday. So oh, it, it was just released on Friday. So those of you that might have gone to bed without this purple um, box here and then woke up and you saw this purple box staring at you, that's because it just got released on Friday. Um, you know, Alex is a man of his word and he said he was gonna get out the notes and he did. Now that stated, I do want you to know, even before you start uh, typing in and asking your questions, uh, 
this is still under development okay so this notes they're still making changes to it so it's not full functionality yet but it is definitely in place i'm excited about it um you know i'll get back to that I just want to call your attention to the fact that we have some other changes you know there's tasks customize customize is still the same websites but you have team you just have the word team here and you have profile the reason for taking out some of these particular words is to save space on our menu bar there are some new functionality coming out in investment dominator for the year 2020 and so you will see some more uh, or additional functionality being added and so we needed more space so that we could put more of the menu functionality in place so that's the reason why um, those changes have been made there are some other changes um, as you can see uh, where it used to say generate documents we now say campaigns that is generate documents so once you take a little time and go through your investment dominator if you haven't already been seeing this and just acquaint yourself with any changes if there's anything you do not understand uh, you're more than welcome to bring it up here on this call or actually type in a question um, into your you know under the help obviously and then you can create a support ticket if there's anything you do not understand so as I forestated, getting back to the notes. Now this particular functionality here, it's pretty cool. It's it's actually allows you when you come to the you, you that have seller financing deals out there, and I'm really ecstatic about this because we have quite a few seller financing deals that we have to manage. This allows you to bring this and manage this from your perspective and organize all of your seller financing deals. Uh, right now, the way it is set up, you can set up, you know, a, they have two, two different types. Um, one is a loan, and then the other is um, the, what we call lease purchase. And right now, actually, the I believe the lease purchase is the only one that you can, um, or I think the lease purchase is coming. So if I were just to open up a new note, and I look at, uh, let's see, note type. You have loan, and it, yeah, the lease purchase is coming soon. So, so those of you that, that may want to start learning about this functionality, one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point you to all of the documentation that we already have in place so that you can become acquainted with it. I'm not gonna demo it here on this particular call, mainly because I just learned about it on Friday myself. And uh, it was a brief uh, introduction into the loan processing and, and how they would do the loan servicing. And so uh, for those of you that are wondering what this might be, the loan servicing is, as I first stated, if you have seller financing deals where if someone gives you, let's say $3,000 down on a piece of property, you set up payments for them this allows you to set those payments up and it's going to allow you to fully manage all of those payments. And the beautiful thing about this is that one of the key pieces of functionality, when the, uh, the individuals are late, if they're late on their, any of their payments that are due, this particular system will calculate a late fee automatically. So based on the dates that it goes in and sees, and for every loan you set up, you'll set up a date that that person should be sending in their payment. And of course, you know, the payment amount is going to be uh, itemized and looked at. And if that payment is late, you know, based on what their loan information says in Investment Dominator, um, it's going to automatically put in the late fee. It, it, you can change your grace period of uh, how long you allow them to be late. Um, it will calculate, do all of these calculations for you. And as a matter of fact, it helps you generate your late payment notices. I mean, this is going to be complete and comprehensive. So what does that mean? Rather than paying a loan 
service uh, provider. Um, I'm trying to remember some of the names because we, we haven't gotten into that yet. We, we're still servicing our own loans. But instead of paying uh, for a loan service, you know, $18, $20 a month, you can now service your own loans. Now, I will tell you up front that, uh, you know, with the investment dominator, you will basically be able to get three notes or loans that you can set up for free. Um, I think after the third one, you know, there's going to be a charge. And I'd say all of that is being worked out right now. So we're going to, you know, I'm not going to give you a whole bunch of information on that. We'll, we'll let you know about that uh, as we, you know, as it's decided by the powers that be. But I, just, I want you to know that this is, this is in place now and we have an opportunity to, to uh, begin to use this and begin to play around with it. If you want to learn about it uh, under help, search our user guide. And if you just type in notes and hit search your user guide, it's going to bring up several articles, you know, how to link buyers to loan or lease purchase records. Um, you know, the difference between loans and lease purchases, you can learn about this, the status of a note and how to update it. So it's going to, it gives you some pretty good information, you know, how to delete a loan note, a note, um, you know, just if you look at the difference between loans and, um, and lease purchases in uh, with a loan, it's a land contract between you and the buyer that allows, you know, and, and it, it has a full amortization schedule built into it. So that's the loan contract that we have in place right now with the amortized schedule. Now, one of the reasons why I can't, I could use this functionality right now is because all of our types of uh, loan where we're the actual bank, we use the lease purchase and we understand that that's coming soon. Now, the loan has an amortized schedule built in through the entire length of the, of the uh, length of term of that loan. A lease purchase agreement is a lease agreement that basically you, you um, lease this land, this parcel to these individuals. They give you so much down um, and you tell them, okay, well, with $3,000 down, your payments are going to be $434 a month. And uh, you include in that particular contract, uh, let's see, if I go back here, notes, and I'm going to edit them. You're going to include all of their loan payment information. Oh, the loan information. Yeah. You know, we, we keep track of all of these figures and when they're late, we charge a late fee. We have to send out our own late notices. Um, but basically the, the main difference between the note, uh, the loan and the lease purchase is that a lease purchase, you give them rental credits. Um, it's not an amortized schedule. So let's say a, a buyer um, has payment of $300 a month. I might give that buyer a credit, a lease credit or rental credit each month of $260. That other $40 goes for my processing fees and you will incorporate all that. And it's just straight across the entire term of the loan. So, uh, and again, without demoing it it, it, it may leave some of you a little confused, but that's the difference between a loan, which has an amortized schedule and a lease purchase agreement which is just you leasing that land to the person. And basically they're renting the land from you for each, each month. And in my particular case, the land stays in our company name. So WM Agape continues to have ownership of that land throughout the entire term. They cannot build, do any major building on that property. And uh, that's how we control. So we don't have to worry about foreclosing on anybody or going through the courts or anything like that. Uh, we basically hold the land in our name. If they default on the loan, we simply send them the appropriate paperwork and we terminate that loan and, uh, you know, life goes on. So, um, all right. So I see we've already got some uh, questions coming in about that. I'll be happy to answer. 
what I can. So first question we got from Don here. Um, why use the lease option in owner of finance of land? Um, are the buyers okay with this? Okay, you're talking about a, a an option contract versus a regular contract. Okay, a lease option versus a, what I call, you know, a regular land contract. Okay, good question, Don. I, I personally, I do not use lease options or an option contract. Um, and I've, I, I, I've shared the reason I don't use that. I don't use a lease option um, because it's not a really binding contract. Lease option says I have the option to, to uh, you know, that the buyer has the option to purchase or I have the option to purchase this land at some date in the future. And I'll put that date on the lease, con lease option, but basically I'm not bound to actually buy that property and the seller doesn't really even have to sell it to me. Um, okay, so anyway, I just want to make sure I'm finishing with this. So it's not as binding as an actual land contract where you say, I'm going to close on a specific date. Um, so are you speaking of, you said use a lease option in owner, oh, owner financing land. Okay. Okay. Okay, good question. Um, let me let me hit that question then. Okay, so why use a lease purchase? You're talking about a lease purchase agreement. versus a loan agreement. Um, so the reason the reason I use a lease purchase agreement because you know I didn't want to get into having to calculate amortization schedules and I didn't really I wasn't really you know when I first got into business I was not uh, astute enough quite honestly, to handle lease, um, excuse me, I wasn't astute enough to handle amortization schedules throughout the term of a loan. And now since then I have learned, you know, there's software that's available that helps you calculate your amortization schedules, et cetera. Um, quite honestly, I didn't want to deal with the headaches of amortizing um, over the, the course of the life of the loan. So to me, rental credit is just straight, you know, you, you pay me $300 a month, I give you credit for $260. So when it's time for you to pay off that, if you want to do, you know, uh, you want to pay it off early, um, it's, it's easy. You just go on and give me the balance. It's easy for me to determine based on all the $260 credits I've given you over the course of the loan. It's easy for me to, to calculate what your payoff is. So that is why I use a lease purchase agreement versus a loan agreement, um, simply because I don't really care for amortized schedules. Now, the beautiful thing about Investment Dominator here is uh, we are going to be helping you handle or keep track of that amortization over the course of the entire loan. So I know there's, there's, there's probably a ton of questions around there, but I want you first to, uh, if you would please, uh, refer to the articles that we have written so far and I think you'll begin to see, uh, begin to get a picture for how this is going to work and how powerful it is. And we do welcome your feedback if you get in and, and based on anything you read, if uh, something is not clear or if it's not working the way we state it is in any of the articles, please, um, yes, please, um, be sure I got, got sidetracked there with, with some comments, but uh, be sure if you're if you're find out anything is not working right, go on and create a support ticket. And uh, when you create your support ticket, 
put as much detail as you can around what you're seeing so that our technical team can work with you. And especially the platform you're using, you know, are you using a, com a computer, uh, a Mac, uh, are you using a phone, et cetera, whatever medium you're using, definitely tell us the browser you're using so that we can have a chance to recreate that issue. Now, in terms of um, this being, you know, do buyers accept this? Yes. Um, do buyers accept the lease purchase agreement? Are they okay with it? Yes, they're okay with it. And I'll tell you one reason why um, the buyers are, at least the ones that I've, I've come in contact with or we've, that we've had um, are very okay with it because a lot of them don't even, they don't even understand how the amortization schedule works. Now, some of the, some of the buyers, um, most of the buyers that we deal with, they're not builders. They, uh, they're not people with a real estate background. They are, you know, people like you and me that want to buy land for their loved ones or they want to buy land to build a home. So, and this is the first land purchase they've ever encountered. So a lot of times you have those types of individuals on, you know, that you're dealing with. And so they're very much okay with a straight lease purchase agreement where they're renting the land and uh, it also encourages them to pay that loan off to, to pay off the land early so that they can start building. But a lot of them just want to get a good price on the land. They want to, they want to lock it down and they want to know that they have this land and they want to make their payments, their monthly payments, because they're not ready to build right away anyway. You know, they're still getting their monies together so they can put their foundation down. They can put a septic tank in. They can do whatever they need to do on the land. So a lot of them are not ready right away to use the land for the purpose they're um, intending. Now, those that want to do recreation things like camping, hunting, etc., cetera, um, they, they don't mind leasing the land from you and being able to have a place where they can go ride their ATVs or their, you know, do their camping. So for, you know, $200 a month, they've got now their own, you know, three or four parcel uh, piece of land that they can do their, their activities on. So yes, buyers are very accommodating. They're very happy about this type of um, setup. Okay, so it is a great deal for us and it's a great deal for the buyer. Let's uh, go on. Yes, you're very welcome. You're very welcome all the time, Don. I, I, I love uh, I love talking with you folks. I, I get uh, I, tell you, I get so inspired when I get a chance to speak with you all on the phone. Some updates that have come in that I wanted to make sure you're aware of. One of which is when you're uploading pictures now, there's been a change in the investment dominator. Let me make sure I put my questions in order here. It's actually number five. And we're 24 minutes into the call. Okay. So let's say I'm offer a request here that I want to bring in a picture of, you know, I'm going to do my due diligence. You know, when I'm in pending preliminary research, I'm doing research on the property. I want to now bring in a picture of that particular property. And let's see, I don't think we have any pictures on this one. Oh, we do. I want to give you an example of what it looks like now when you're bringing in pictures. So I just, all I did was go in and edit the file. Now I'm gonna locate my picture file on my computer. And let's just say that I want to bring in, uh, let's see, a picture of a county shot. So I double clicked on that to bring that in. Now, before an investment dominator, when you did the start upload, you would have the picture appear, you know, in its entirety right here. 
Um, but what we were having happen, I believe, and, and, and a lot of what a lot of users, uh, students were forgetting to do their update record. So when they located the file and they uploaded the file into Investment Dominator, see, the picture hasn't been saved at this point. The picture is not really going to be in that Investment Dominator record until you hit update record. So our technical team made the change that you can't even really see the picture here, as you can see it. All you know is you have reference to a picture. You will not see this until you hit update record. So once you hit update record and you get this message record has been updated and you scroll down now, here's your picture that you can see. But the important thing is it, you've already hit your update record. So before we do locate file, we would upload it into Investment Dominator. The picture would show up like this and then our students would just go on about their business thinking that this photo was a part of that record and forgetting to hit update record. So the technical team now, you can't even see the picture unless you hit update record. So that's the reason, that's one of the one of the changes that have come down the pike here in, uh, in the last few weeks. Okay, Ed had a question from last, that I wanted to clarify. We had to do with uh, just you know simply importing records. Twenty eight minutes, and and something that I mentioned on the last call: importing records into Investment Dominator, where you have second or third owners, specifically around the apostrophe. Okay, so I'm going to real quick here, I'm going to go into search our user guide and we're going to do import. Just want to make sure that everyone understands this uh, because it might have, I might have confused some folks on the other call and I didn't want to do that. So if you look at the fields that can be imported into Investment Dominator, you have uh, these owner's last name, owner's first name. You notice you have the apostrophe S here. And what, what I stated before, you know, like, you know, you were able, I used to be able to just copy this field and then I would make it a part of my Excel file. Let's say like this, I'm going to insert. Okay, I used to be, I could copy and if you, oh, I don't want to do that. If you do, just try to copy this field name like this and put it into Excel. Okay, it, it comes in and it appears as though the apostrophe is there that it copied. But what I wanted to make sure everybody understands is that your apostrophe is not really an apostrophe. So if I try to import this with the owner's um, last name, or if I try to import second owner's first name and then second owner's last name, any, any field that has an apostrophe, what I have to do is I have to go in, I have to backspace that apostrophe and actually type in an apostrophe in Excel. Okay, I wanna make sure everybody understands that. And I, I didn't mention that on last, last time, especially because um, I know there was one student that was going to be going to do this process. So if you just copy that in from this particular format, see, this is, this is basically a web, um, uh, it's a web item or it's a web variable. 
and this is a web variable. Anything that is on the investment dominator, if you copy it, it actually comes into Excel. Excel considers it a website variable. So Excel can't handle website variables. So if you just copy it and paste it in here, what's gonna happen when you save this file and then you import this file, you're gonna get an error. And it's gonna be because Excel cannot resolve this website variable. So it's very important that you backspace, as I said, and type in your apostrophes for those particular fields that have apostrophes. So you'll do that for any time you do the second owners, you know, third owners, you know, fourth owners, fifth owners. And once you do that, you can import successfully. If you do not, if you get an error, um, which you'll, you'll notice that what you have to do is you have to go back into Excel here and either if you, you know, backspace and, and, and you have no apostrophe at all, then Excel or the uh, investment dominator will accept this field. So I just want to make sure I clarify that. Uh, you have to type in your own apostrophes if you want to successfully import into investment dominator. Okay, any questions there? Okay, very good. All right, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate your, your positive comments. I just uh, really appreciate you folks out there. Okay. If there, um, let's see. Oh, I think I missed one of the questions. Um, one of the questions that have to do with the loan servicing. Okay, which is what kind of rate of rate is their rent oh, versus payment? Okay, so that's a very good question. Very good question, because under loan servicing, when you when you do a loan versus a well, let's see. The only thing I do is show you with a new loan, new note. Okay, when you do a loan versus a lease purchase, okay, loans can have interest rates. That's one of the main things that you'll learn. When, whenever you do a lease purchase contract, which is you're renting that property, you're renting that land to a particular buyer, lease purchase agreements cannot have interest rates. So that's, the, that's one of the main differences. Your loan will have an interest rate and we usually have an interest rate of about 12.9% is where we start. Now you can encourage um, you know, you can encourage buyers to put down more money. Um, you know, I've done this a couple of times with a, a couple of my my uh, my my buyers. I said, okay, you know, right now your agreement, your fees that you pay us for doing your lease purchase, come to about twelve percent, twelve point nine percent. But since we can't charge you interest. Um, we give you a, a, a rental credit. Instead of putting down three thousand, if you put down six thousand dollars, Mr. Buyer, I will lower your fee to, you know, thirty dollars for, for our processing instead of, you know, forty or fifty or sixty dollars. So, with a but with a loan, if you have a loan, which is the way it's set up right now, you can charge an interest rate. And the interest rate, I think, defaults to 12.9%. You can encourage your buyers, okay, you put down more money, down payment, give me a bigger down payment, and I will decrease your interest rate. And you could charge whatever you want for the interest rate. Remember, you are the bank. You are, uh, they are coming to you, so you can basically charge what you want. And so we've thought about, you know, when we do start doing the loans, we'll just say, okay, you know, we'll... With, with if you want to double that down payment, 
will bring your interest rate you know, down to 9% or will bring your interest rate down to 8%, something like that. And you encourage them to put down more money. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, when you're leasing the land, you cannot charge an interest rate. So uh, they, um, people understand that and they have been perfectly fine with it. It's been working for us. And actually because of the seller financing, and I was so excited about this because of the seller financing, you know, that's what enabled uh, my particular income to be replaced, you know, then some, then, and I was able to actually retire from my corporate position because we had enough of those uh, lease purchase agreements in place. Um, some are going out 100 months, some are going out 84 months, some going out 72 months. And, uh, you know, you just uh, see the checks come in or they put it, they deposit the money straight into our account. So I want to encourage you that does work and it can actually uh, change your life. So if you're on a job right now, you don't want to be there. There is a way out. So just want to encourage you guys on that. Um, let's see, total payment is 500, but their principal is 300. Oh, your typical, okay, typical ratio, it's, it's usually, I say, you say, Don, so the payment may be 500. So for a $500 payment, um, you're calling it their principal. For us, it's their their rental credit. <laughs> so their rental credit for yeah, Tracy, you're asking a good question too. So their rental credit on on something like that, we might charge you know uh, fifty or sixty dollars for their for our fees. So their payment may be $500, but they'll get a rental credit of, you know, 440 or 450, something like that. So let me make sure I get that down. Payment is 500. And, and this is something that you decide each month or, or you know based on the the amount of money you're getting um you decide how much you're going to charge you know what your fees are each month there's really no there's no rule about that um there is no set guideline on how you figure that especially for the lease purchase agreement now the loans have a whole different, you know, way of calculating. So, so that's that's going to be, you know, to your advantage uh, to have this in investment dominator, and it's all in one place. This also is going to help you when it comes to taxes, uh, because we have reports within investment dominator that you could be able to produce and print, send to your CPA, and you are done. Okay. So, um, all right. So let's see. Um, so you have liability concerns if someone gets hurt and you're on the property. Good question, Teresa. Okay. That is a very good question. And the answer is yes. Um, liability concerns. And based on, based on what the person is going to be doing with the land, Okay, if someone gets hurt, 
yes, we do have liability concerns. And, and, and for that reason, uh, just for that reason alone, some individuals have chosen not to keep the property in their name, in their company's name, because they don't know exactly what the person is going to be doing on the property. We, uh, you know, we have, we develop a relationship with our buyers and we try to find out as much as we can about what, how they plan to use the property. You know, are they going to build a home? Um, but even if they go out and they're just cleaning up the property, you know, someone could get hurt on the property. So we are, um, we encourage folks to look into, you know, a short term insurance policy that it could cover you for, you know, so many thousands of dollars on the property because you definitely do run the risk if you keep the property in your name, since you are the owner of the property, if someone gets hurt, they could come back actually and sue you for, um, for being hurt. Now that's why we have a lease agreement and the lease agreement has specifics that it, uh, that it spells out what they can do and cannot do on that property. And so we, we have them some, you know, sign saying that they know what their limitations are and that, uh, you know, basically if they decide to do something crazy, you know, like we did have one person that said they were going to be riding their ATVs on, you know, they have a 29 acre parcel and they wanted to be able to hunt and fish and, you know, ride their motorcycles. So we, we then had to carry some insurance as we, um, we had to carry insurance on that property while they are still making payments. But what we did was we went on and we included that insurance payment into their monthly payment. So into their monthly rental payment. So in essence, they're paying for their own insurance. They're paying for the insurance on that property because of the activity they're choosing to engage in. And uh, that is, that is the way we handle that. And so we're, we're really not concerned, you know, once we have that in place um, of uh, keeping the land in our name. Okay. There's a tremendous amount of interest when you sell the property. Mm. Well, let's see, Dan. Yes, do we lose a tremendous amount of interest when you sell the property on a lease purchase? Well, over the reason why we don't feel like we lose, now that's a, that's a good question, very good question. The reason why, I'm going to write it down here. Do we lose a lot of interest? Now, remember, we're not charging interest. Remember, we charge rental credits because we're using the lease purchase. So it's it. I know you're used to thinking of it in terms of interest, but it's actually a lease. It's actually a rental credit. So do we use do we lose a lot of um, interest or rental credit money um, when we use the lease purchase? And I say no. Okay, a lease purchase because remember, here's the way it works. Um, we in fact we just did one before Christmas. Uh, we did we did another seller financing deal where we did a lease purchase. Now here's the deal: we had we owed our seller seven thousand um, some odd dollars for this property. We we were actually going to end up getting I think right around you know thirty grand for this property um, that we were selling them if they had done a cash deal. Okay, that we would have made you know the thirty grand, but. What we had them do was we had them put down a the amount of the down payment we were asking for was seventy five hundred dollars. So remember the cost going to our seller was right around seventy four hundred dollars. So basically they put down the money to pay our seller 
for that property. We then go and put the property in our name. And you know, we file it with the county, $26, file it with the county, put it in our name. They start making us payments. Well, just imagine, you know, their payments on this particular parcel is coming out to $434.66 a month. So just imagine in in 10 months, um, in 10 months, we've got uh, we've got four grand, you know, in our pockets. You know, another 10 months, we have you know, 80, about 80, uh, $8,600 in our pockets. So we had $4,300 in our pockets after 10 months, another 10 months, we have $8,600 in our pockets. That's 20 months, that's less than two years. So remember, we've already paid off the land and they're making payments to us that are free and clear. We don't owe anything. We, um, you know, we're charging them for any insurance. So, in for the life of this loan, um, this one came out to be, I think, 48 months um, for this particular deal. So for 48 months, we're collecting $434.66 a month, putting it in our pockets. Um, that's well over 16 grand, 18 grand that we, you know, that we'll make on the life of that just in payments. And remember, they already gave us seven grand, you know, seven grand up front. So what do you have there? You know, um, what I say? So seven grand up front plus another um, 18 grand um, that they, you know, they end up pay making in payments. Um, so we're going to put, you know, we're basically going to put in our pockets, you know, well over eighteen thousand dollars after paying that that off, and I mean that's that's not losing any money to me. Um, actually, actually for that particular loan, it's it's gonna it's I said forty eight months, but I think it's more like seventy two months because with our payments we're gonna make much more than the thirty grand um, for them purchasing even if they purchased it as a, as a cash deal. So whenever you do your, your seller financing, um, you actually end up making more money over the life or the term of that loan than, than you do if they just do a cash deal or if it's, if it's a loan. But remember, again, we're not charging any interest. Okay, I hope, that's, hope I didn't confuse anybody. Um, when you start putting it down, when you start doing your deals and Investment Dominator figures up what the payments are, and you see the life of that particular loan, you always come out making much more money uh, doing the payments than you do when you're, um, you know, doing even a cash deal. So that's why we like seller financing. It also creates that, that income stream that we love each month. Okay, let's see, did I miss anything else here? You're very welcome, Dan. Um, let's see. And uh, Michael, wait, no, it's not. There's no way you can see other folks' questions that are coming in. So if you have a question, just go ahead and type it in. Um, we're happy to answer it. And we've got about uh, ten minutes here. I want to finish up on a couple of things that. Uh, Okay, this is another clarification. Okay, another clarification on tagging records. There's some been conf some confusion. When when you tag records, there's two different ways that you can tag records. First of all, you can let's see. I can open up uh, an Excel file here. Okay. If I were going to import this file into Investment Dominator, you know, this has two records, but we'll pretend there's, you know, 200 records. All right, I can tag by putting the heading, column heading tags into the investment dominator 
and I'll specify what I want the tag to be. In this case, we're saying this is a second offer and we're tag tagging a second, off a second offer, but you can use a tag for importing, you know, for specific county, you know, and I can call this tag anything I want. So I could do, you know, tag more and I might put the date, um, you know, in the tag so that I know I imported, you know, these records for this particular county on this particular date, if I, if I want to track that. Some of you that are testing counties, you know, you may want to tag one county versus the next county so that you, you know where all these records are, how they're being tagged when they come into investment domain. Now that's one way to tag records. You can use the designation as you import. The next way that you can tag records that are, let's say, already in Investment Dominator. You can see I have several records in prospect status here. The other way to tag records is you come up under Customize. You go into Tags, you see, and you can add a tag. You can create a tag in Investment Dominator. Um, tag, uh, let's say, Arnett. And I may not put a date on this one. I'll just say, you know, tag Harnett. So, so that's Harnett County. All right, I'm gonna add my tag here. All right, so since I've added a tag, when I come into my land deals records, any of these records that do not currently possess a tag, I can select them. And I come over here and I want to add my tag manually on those records. So I'm going, this is a way to add one of the tags that you've already created. See my tag Harnett County, I can put that on, confirm the tag and voila. So all these records now have been tagged. If I edit them, all of these records have been tagged with the Harnett County. If I had imported them through Investment Dominator, as I import the records, they would have come back. Uh, let's see. They would have come back with whatever tag I specified as they came into Investment Dominator in prospect status. So I'm, I, I'm just, what I'm just trying to point out here, we had some confusion about, you know, how do you tag records? You, you know, and there's two different ways, tag them as you're importing them or tag them after they're in Investment Dominator by creating your tag and then manually adding your tag. So I hope that's more clear on how you tag records. How uh, to tag records in Investment Dominator. Oh, okay, very good, uh, very good questions and very good clarification here. Let's see. I think I have um, all of the questions answered that have come in today. We did have one more question that came in on 12:30, so that was last week. From Mike, I don't know. I don't know if it was Mike, uh, the Mike that's on with us today, or if it was another Mike. I didn't put down the last name. But the question is, how are neighbors identified to a certain location? And I had I had a little bit I had to remember <laughs> where we were where we were at when we were talking about importing, um, and I believe we were talking about okay. Hmm. Okay, I believe we were talking about when we were importing. Records, and I'll look at this real quick 
to see if my field that I'm looking for is on here. Otherwise, I may have to get some more clarification on this particular question. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Now I think I'm, I'm remembering. Okay, under marketing, under under marketing, which which was our buyers. So here's here's where the question came up. Uh, you know, I was talking about how to import. If you want to him import buyers into the investment dominator, like in, in a bulk fashion. So we had a whole bunch of buyers and, and we're trying to import. If you look at your sample list here, which I'll bring up the sample list, as you can see, it has a type over here. And I think the question that was coming from Mike at the time, and again, I don't know if it's Mike that's on with us right now, but if it is, please clarify that if I don't have this right. He was saying with this neighbor, um, how do you identify them for a specific location? Um, because if you look at marketing, you know, you have your prospects over here and they are, there are specific land locations that you can tie to all of your prospective buyers to say, this person was basically interested in this particular parcel. So if we're importing into Investment Dominator and it's a neighbor that you're importing, a neighbor type record, okay, how you tie a neighbor to a specific property is by giving them that designation as you import their first name, last name, address, etc. You want to say what land they're interested in. So what I would do, I would come in here and say, if it was this particular parcel of land that I have for sale, I'm going to copy this, go right back into Investment Dominator, and in the interested field, and you can see there's multiple fields, I'm going to type this, uh, this land and the actual APN that this particular neighbor would be interested in. And again, what we use the neighbors for, remember, you have a piece of par parcel, you have a parcel under contract, you're, you've got it marketed, you want to get all the neighbors within, you know, 20 mile, you know, 15, 10 mile radius, you can, you can locate all the neighbors, then you can send your neighbor letters out to those specific neighbors that are around this particular parcel. So you would import into Investment Dominator all of the first and last name addresses of all of the neighbors interested, you might say, that would be interested in this land. And so that's how you tie the neighbors to a specific location um, by using the interested in field that is in your import file into Investment Dominator. And then once you imported it, you would do exactly the same thing as you do for your land deals record. You would choose the file, upload the list, and boom, all your prospects would come in here. Um, and they would automatically show that the land that they're interested in is the one you specified on the import. Okay, so that's about all we have time for. Again, if you have any more questions, we will be back here Thursday. Uh, I uh, we didn't schedule, uh, as you can see, the call for last Thursday um, because it was scheduled. They wanted everything to start on the first Monday of the year. So again, Happy New Year to you all and leave you with this thought. Uh, very simple and short. Some people dream of success while others wake up and work. So I want you to know that you can be successful. You will be successful as long as you stay in line in this business and you you know, prevent yourself from getting sidetracked. That came from Walt Disney. So some people dream of success while others wake up and work. I want you to have a great remainder of your evening and we'll look forward to talking with you again on Thursday at uh, 12 noon right here. Thank you so much for your kindness and I will definitely be in Tampa. I'll be traveling to Tampa on the 16th. 
Um, so obviously we won't have a we won't have a webinar on the 16th, and we won't have a webinar on the following Monday, the 20th. Um, but uh, I will be in Tampa and be able to even answer some questions there. So hey, you guys have a great evening, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care now. Bye bye.